morning. Welcome to our morning, Tuesday morning devotion. It is another day that God has allowed us. We should be glad in it. We should praise him for who he is. Yes, he has been a good God. He has been our provider and also our sustainer. Thank God for the gift of life. Thank God for the good health. You may also be ill, but thank him that he has allowed you to be alive today. It is a blessing to see a new day. And it reminds us it is not by our power, but by the power of God and by the grace of God. God has been so gracious to us that he even forgives us of our sins. We know we have done wrong. We have neglected to do right. But God still continues to love us, to care for us, and to remind us that we should repent of our sins and desire to live a righteous life so that we may also share in his eternal life with him in heaven. It is good to remind ourselves that we are here to worship God. We are here to honor God. We were created as tools of worship to God. That when we live, let our lives be of worshiping God. It is the sole purpose that God has called us to do. Yes, we have our own goals. Yes, we have our own personal desires. As we do all these things, let us not forget that the sole purpose of me and you being alive is to worship God. The sole purpose of our creation is to worship God, worshiping him for what we have and who we are. In this month, we are talking about worship, worshiping God with our wealth, that God has called us to worship him with what we have and what we have received because we have received from him. It is a topic that many times people shy of because money is a sensitive topic. But today we want to learn that God has allowed us that money be part of worship, that we can worship him with our money, that we can worship him with our finances. In the book of Mark, a story we know very well, in the book of Mark 12, the gospel according to Mark, chapter 12 from verse 41 to 42, this is a story of the widow. And from verse 41, she says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people drew in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything all she had to live on. Jesus Christ is in the temple. And when Jesus was in the temple, there were all kinds of worship. Then it came to that point of worshiping God with their wealth. And we see Jesus standing and seeing what people were giving or what they were putting in the offering on the treasury box. And we see that many rich people give large amounts. And there's this lady who was a widow who gave just two very small copper worth a few pence. And Jesus says that this widow has given more or has put more to the treasury than others. One, Jesus assesses how we give. He examines how we give. God examines the things we give to him. He looks at us and compares and looks at what we are giving versus what we have. The test is the giving versus what we have. And in this, Jesus confirms that indeed we can worship God with our monies. By this story, by Jesus being there and his comment on the poor, he is reminding us that as we worship God, we can please God with our monies. We can worship God 
with our money. We can honor God indeed with our money. And just like any other worship, God looks at our worship in giving. The same way we want to please him in dancing, in singing, in everything we do in church and outside the church. The same way we know that he looks at us and he's pleased when we are worshiping him and praising him in songs. He reminds us, he also looks at us when it comes to giving our monies to him. And God will compare how much we give with what we have in possession. That was what Jesus saw, that they gave out of their abundance. They gave out of their wealth. But look at this lady. She gave her all. She gave out of her poverty. One lesson we learn is that wealth is a test of character. Jesus Christ looks at us and reminds us that your character can be determined by your wealth, can be influenced by your wealth, that when we test your character, if we look at how you spend your monies, we can know the kind of character you have. Yes, we know wealth is a result of our labor. That is what the world has taught us, that it is through our hard work that we have received what we have earned. Yes, it is true. It is out of doing business and thinking and thinking and planning that we've been able to receive what we have. That is what the Bible, or, or, or that is how the world today also teaches us. It is out of our own strength. It is out of our own hard work. It is out of our own commitment that we have received what we have. But those are the worldly standards and the worldly teachings. The Bible teaches us that everything belongs to God and everything that we have received, we have received by the grace of God. It is God who has allowed you to do that business. It is God who has allowed you to have that career. It is God who has given you the strength to do that business, to go out and work. Everything belongs to him. And when we are living in this society, when we are living in this world, when it comes to a test of character, that wealth is a test of character, we will be tested on how we live. Do we go by the worldly standards or the heavenly standards? The worldly standards are that the one who has much will be respected more than the other. The one who gives more will be respected and will receive honor than the one who receives less. But look at this story. Jesus Christ sees beyond the amount, but looks at the heart. Wealth has been a source of fame. Wealth has been a source of a luxurious life. And the world is teaching us that we should accumulate as much as possible because when we have wealth and great wealth, then we'll be famous and we'll live a righteous life. And wealth also comes with power and influence. We are living in a world where those who have are ruling over those who do not have. The haves and the have-nots. And these are the worldly standards that today we are living in. Though we are Christians, we ought to be the light of the world and show that these are not heavenly standards. We at times are also tempted to judge people based on how much they are worth. How much respect we accord them depends on how much they have. But look at the poor widow. Jesus Christ was honored. He was pleased by her giving. He was, give, he was pleased by her heart that out of her poverty, she honored God. He was pleased by her giving. Even though she was poor, she still gave. And Jesus is talking to us that we should honor God with what we have is. But maybe we should also remember that we should give sacrificiously. 
he is reminding us that out of their abundance, they were able to give much. But that was not a sacrifice. This lady gave it all. She did it as a sacrifice. She gave sacrificiously to God. Out of love, she gave her all. It is not about giving much, but giving in a way of sacrifice. Sacrificing ourselves to give the best. Sacrificing ourselves to give all to God because we know that everything belongs to him. Jesus Christ is talking about giving sacrificiously. When we come worshiping God with our wealth, let us worship him sacrificiously. But again, the question that maybe may have been raised then and is still raised today is that now that we are followers of Christ and indeed we want to honor God, how much should we give as a way of honoring God? If I give much out of my abundance, I'm not pleasing God, then how much then should I give? What percentage, what amount should we give? How much should we give God? Is it about the 10%? Is it about giving half of what we have? Is it about giving everything that we have received and remaining with nothing? How do we give to God so that we may please him? Unfortunately, now this is where the worldly concept comes in. We honor people based on how much we give. We honor people based on how much they allow us to receive from them. But that is not what Jesus Christ wants us to learn. And that is not the concept of God. The concept of God is that we should give generously without being asked a specific amount of, of money. It is not about a specific amount. It's not about a specific percentage. It is about giving generously and sacrificiously. Yes, there are teachings that have come telling us of how much we should give. But Jesus Christ will not engage himself in that debate in how much, but how you give. Generously and sacrificiously. If we give generously and sacrificiously, then we'll give much more. Not based on how much, but based on does it sacrificiously come from my heart? Have I given something that indeed I can be proud of, that it has touched the heart of Jesus, that it has touched the heart of God? Our, our giving should, uh, should express our love for God. It should show our character as givers, as generous, as, as people who can sacrifice for the work of God. Giving and worshiping should be sacrificial. It should be going beyond what we have, going beyond what we do normally, but doing it with love, generously and sacrificiously. Our giving should be from an attitude of gratitude. When we give out of this is what God has given me and my attitude is thanking God because of what he has done. When I'm giving my offering, I'm giving out of thanksgiving for what I've received. When I'm giving my tithes, I'm giving out of thanksgiving because God has allowed me to have. When I'm supporting the work of God, I'll support it from a point of thanksgiving because I know God has allowed me. By giving, I'll be tested my character. Money is part of worship. Giving to God is part of our worship. But again, how we spend our money and how we give shows our character. Are we generous before God? Are we generous people when it comes to giving? Because we can worship God with our monies. We have been worshiping him and now he's reminding us that as we worship, let us not forget that let us give the best. Let our giving show our character. Let our giving show how much we love God. If we truly love him, we will give as much as we can. Not because we've been told of a specific amount, but out of our abundance, we'll give abundance with love. Out of our poverty, we will still give because we know that even the little we have as this widow belongs to God. And we said, when we give, 
and we obey his word, then we attract blessings. We will give sacrificiously. We will give generously. Our giving will show our character. It will show that we are true worshippers. True worshippers of God. Not because of how much we give, but how we give. Out of our abundance, we will give our abundance with love. Out of our poverty, we will give how much we have with love. Because we know we are not poor, we are blessed. The little we have belongs to God. The much we have belongs to God. When we come before him, he will not dictate how much, but we look at our hearts and it will determine our character. May God help us that we may truly be true worshippers of God when we come to giving. That we do not give in vain, but we give to touch the heart of God. That we may give a sacrifice that will please God, that will be acceptable to him, that will not be a mockery, but will be pleasing. In fact, that is what Jesus was saying, that they've just given, just as a way of giving, but not as a way of worshiping God. But this widow has given from her heart as a way of worshiping God, and truly, she has pleased me. She has pleased God. She has honored me. She has honored God. May we honor God. May we worship God by giving out of love, sacrificiously, and also generously. Not because we have much, but because we know the much we have belongs to him and we have received from him. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.